Richard, it's great to meet you. Thank you so much for coming to Housing Technology. Thanks for having me, George. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Met some lovely people, um, a really diverse group of people you got here and looking forward to the next couple of days. So since we last met, you've obviously done a huge amount of stuff. Well, I'm still doing my best to avoid getting a real job, George. It's been a whirlwind few years, actually. I've been back to Nepal uh, on Everest, this time without supplemental oxygen. But actually, the biggest challenge I've had the last few years is bringing our son into the world. Um, Joe and I have had a little boy, Freddie, and it's just been a wonderful adventure. It's, it, it's challenged all of my thoughts on adventure and risk, um, but actually I've come out the other end even more passionate to, uh, to, to share my message, I guess. In your presentation, you said to everybody that they ought to be adventure ready. What did you mean by that? The world we live in is changing at, a, at an unprecedented speed and the you know, industry is uncertain. Um, our society is, is, is dynamic. I think having a mindset, which I refer to as the adventure mindset or an adventure mindset, to embrace the unknown with optimism um, and have the courage to stretch beyond our comfort zones, I think is more important than ever. I think it's critical, if I'm being honest, and it's about you know, being smart about developing skills that future-proof yourself, having the attitude to transfer skills from one career to another career, you know, um, recruiting the right, um, the right support and performance team around you, smart risk management, physical and mental health and well-being, all these components that enable me to do what I do from a performance point of view, I think can be transferred into how we choose to live our lives. And that's, that's what I meant by being adventure ready. What would you give people in their sort of toolkit as a, as a method, potentially, in these life-changing days that we're living in with mm. new technological change? Whatever field or sector we're in, I think that the path to any success is through dark periods and is through the failure, through the vulnerability, through the self-doubt. And it's only through these experiences that we are able to develop our own tools and our own coping strategies. I think, first of all, accepting or, or embracing the vulnerability and the self-doubt has certainly been um, really powerful to me. You know, we live in a society at the moment where we're only interested in the the tip of the iceberg, <laughs> you know, and uh, through social media, through television, everything is about perfection and instant gratification and, and that image, whether it's young kids in school or a senior executive of having to be perfect and on it all the time, you know, is, is, is really limiting. And, and I think through the injury that ended my career and through that really dark emotional period, that enabled me to break free from the shackles of this. And, and I think, once I became free of being scared, it just enabled me to embrace my vulnerabilities, embrace my weaknesses, and having the confidence to accept who I am and why I am like it has, has actually enabled me to channel what I perceived as my biggest weakness into my biggest strength. And I'm still scared of the environments I'm performing and what I do now, but actually, instead of it being limiting, it's what drives my attention to detail, my meticulous preparation, and you know, that in itself has underpinned my success. What you've managed to do then is you've looked at a problem and then you've gone, well, I need meticulous preparation to achieve all of those hurdles towards mm. reaching your end goal. How do you begin? The challenge is that there's no prescribed path <laughs> to it. So we have the end goal and for me it's quite easy. It's standing on the summit of a mountain or it's reaching the South Pole solo and unsupported. How I get there and the people I work with, that's fluid and I think that fluidity gives me the freedom actually to, to collaborate with some really unique and wonderful people and come up with some really creative solutions and I think it's that process applies to everything. It's, it's understanding exactly what the problem is or what the challenge is and then creating a support team around me with unique skills. Um, and individual skills and then having the fluidity to find our own path and find our way to that. Understandably there's failures but actually the learning that comes from that I would hope and I'm very proud to say you know um, benefits all of us within the team and, and we all grow as individuals professionally and personally and uh, 
and sharing that journey makes it all the more special. We in our sector, the housing sector, has probably one of the biggest problems that we face humanity, mm. which is there are not enough homes for people to live in. Can any problem be solved? I believe any problem can be solved. The challenge, I think, is in any organisation is having the right culture to, to accept the vulnerability, to share the problem, to talk about the problem, and to collaboratively work together in the solution. You talked about humanity, the, the, the ability to be humanitarian and help others before you help yourself. Even, quite simply, the ability to, to not be perfect uh, or the attitude to, to be vulnerable and to share problems and bring people in, I, I think, is, is becoming more and more challenging in, in industry and schools. But with more people like yourself, with more um, events like the Housing Tech Conference, you know, the, these networking events, these thought events are really important because it's an opportunity for people to, in a safe environment, talk about the things that went wrong, talk about the challenges they have and share solutions and ideas and actually, you know, come up with collaborative solutions. And uh, this is a really important part of, of our society moving forward, you know, giving people the dignity and uh, to have homes. What I find absolutely fascinating is that somebody like yourself can bring together what I can genuinely see as world-class individuals to actually achieve a set of objectives. When you think of the things that people do and what needs to happen in the world, it can be solved. We just need what you've just described as the right individuals. It is about having a clear objective, a clear goal, a clear problem for want of a better phrase. And then it's about aligning individuals and organizations with the right culture, the right values, um, and enabling people to, ha to empower their part of the project. That's been, I think, the the most powerful part of the teams that I, that I assemble. And I'm really proud, actually, it's really important that everybody on that team benefits in some way. Uh, an example would be my performance director has written research papers and uh, uh, through the work that we've done, my clothing sponsors develop new fabrics. Um, everyone has a small part of the project that is integral to their own business or their own development. And they have ownership of that. And by, by doing that, it means that everyone's invested and working with my mates, people with shared values, but everyone having their own part of the puzzle that they own. And actually, we all benefit at the end of it. Technology is very much a part, by the sounds of it, of mm. some of your adventures. Mm. Do you have a, an opinion about the use of technology and how you see it from your, from your perspective? I feel very lucky to be of the generation where I knew what life was like before mass technology, as well as being young enough to have embraced it within my day-to-day -day life. So for me, it, I, I have very much a positive attitude towards technology, but there does come a caveat with that. As technology evolves and things become more automated, I think there's a risk of us losing the very attributes that make us human. I feel very proud to be able to earn a living doing what I do. I'm very proud of what I've achieved, but what really drives me actually is public service. What really drives me is trying to make my community and my world and serve my country um, a slightly better place. And that's all we can do. Actually sharing what I do is a really important part of, of what I'm trying to achieve and that's, uh, that's giving back. It's been a real privilege. Oh, thanks, George. I'm very humbled and proud to have known you and met you. Thank you very much for, for sharing your thoughts with us. It's been fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you, George. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, George. It's been, uh, it's been awesome. And, uh, and I hope you take me up on my offer to come for a coffee in Cardiff one day. I certainly will. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, mate.